Hey everyone, today we are going to learn about Angular's new resource feature, and we will use it to perform reactive data fetching in an asynchronous manner. Please note this feature is experimental, so there is no guarantee that the API will remain exactly the same until it is officially stable. So let's take a look at my Angular projects, and we can see I'm using Angular version 19.1.6, and this feature was introduced in Angular version 19. So I'd recommend you upgrade to the latest version if you want to use this feature as well. To start off, we'll take a look at the application configuration that I have defined. And as you can see, I haven't changed anything besides just providing the built-in Angular HTTP client to the application. I typically prefer Angular's HTTP clients because it allows me to use other Angular features such as interceptors. And those allow me to do things such as adding a header to an HTTP request before it is sent. And that's useful in cases where you have an API that's being called with a token that you want to inject the token into every single request you make. That way I don't have to define the header in every single request I make throughout my app to the API. So besides the config, we can also take a look at the routes that we have set up. I just have one route here defined and a redirection rule on the root level path that's redirecting to that route. And it's just the posts route. And as you can see, it's loading a component, which is the post list component, which I have defined in my file directory. And so we'll take a look at this component and we can see we have a read-only service that's private and it's being injected using Angular's dependency injection system. And it's injecting the post service class that I've defined in my services folder. We'll take a look at that in a second. And then I have a public variable, which is a posts observable. And we're saying that to be equal to the return value of the list posts method from the post service. So if we hover over this list posts, we'll see that I have a method defined in the post service and is returning an observable with an array of posts. So let's take a look at that real quick. And we'll see that we have a post service, which is injecting the HTTP client that we provided in our application config. And then we have a list posts method returning the observable posts that we just saw in the last file. And then it's returning the HTTP get request, which is typed to return an array of posts. And then it's hitting this endpoint, which is just a mock API endpoint that just has JSON posts and we're limiting it to only a response of five. And the post type is going to be a user ID, which is a number, a post ID, which is a number, a title of a string and a body of a string. So if we take a look at Firefox and go to that posts resource, we'll see that the JSON of it contains the exact same type that I defined for the post. And we're gonna return the first five, so we should expect when we render it to have these first five posts. So now we can go back and look at how the markup is being rendered for a post list component. So going back here, we see we have this component again with the post observable, and we're injecting the asynchronous pipe which is just unwrapping a value from an asynchronous primitive. And just the TLDR is that it automatically handles subscribing and subscribing from the observable from us, and it will return the last emitted value. Now taking a look at the markup shows that we have this main section and we're using Angular's template for loop to iterate over the posts of the observable posts piped to the async pipe, which is gonna subscribe and unsubscribe from it for us. And then we're going to track the post.id and as you can see in the post service, we have post.id here. That's the exact mapping. And then we have this div block inside that's just putting the post title and post body. Again, that aligns with the title and body properties that we defined within the post type. So we can go and run our server now with ng serve, go back to our browser and go to localhost 4200. We'll refresh and we see the posts are being rendered and there's five posts in total. If we go and check with the title text and it matches up with what our raw JSON data from this placeholder site is showing. Now this is great and everything works as expected. However, there is a new way of doing things in Angular and Angular as a framework is seeing a major shift towards the usage of signals. And so personally, I'm trying to use signals wherever I can now throughout my projects. And I find that the fine grained reactivity that they provide makes development a lot cleaner and simpler to reason through. And so I recommend using it wherever possible if you think that applies to your project as well.
So now we can go back and introduce signals into our component and service, and most notably the resource signal. But in our case, because we're using the HTTP clients that's built into Angular, we're going to have to use the Rx resource signal. And that's the exact same functionality as the resource signal, except that it is built for usage with observables, while resource is ideally used with promises. So to change this, let's just define a resource. So I'm going to name this the posts resource, and I'm going to set it to be Rx resource. And we'll see that that imported this function from the Angular core RxJS interop package. And for the resource, we're going to define a loader, and we're going to set that to return the value of this dot list posts. And we'll see that that's an observable. And if we hover over Rx resource, we'll see that this function is just like resource, but it uses an Rx.js based loader, which maps a request to an observable of the resource's value. And it's very similar to first value from, as it uses only the first emission of the observable. So this means once this post service is first instantiated and created, it's going to immediately call this post resource with the loader, so it will run immediately. And because we're providing this resource in root, this means that it will occur only once, and that occurs at the time when the post service is first injected anywhere throughout the Angular application. In our case, this is going to be in the post list component here. Now the post resource has very helpful functions built into it. And if we just define a quick constructor, just to highlight this, I'm just gonna say it has a value, which is a signal being returned, which is a writable signal. And it has the current value of the resource or undefined if there is no value. It also has a has value, which is checking whether this resource has a valid current value and the function is reactive. There's also a reload, which will allow you to immediately call the loader function again. So anywhere in your app, you can do something such as define a button that will call the reload function on the resource and it will automatically refetch the data. So if you have stale data that you wanna update periodically, you can have the user do it, or you can use something such as a timeout to repeatedly call the reload function. You can also check if it is loading. There's a lot of other features such as that that you should read up on within Angular's official documentation for it, which I have linked below in the description. So we can delete this constructor. And now I generally define my signals within a service because I find that it makes my code more clean and refactorable because I find that it minimizes the complexity of my code. There's some cases where I define signals in the components if it's something that depends on the components lifecycle. However, if it's something such as the post resource that I want to live throughout the entire duration of my application, then I think a signal, especially one that's provided in root, is the way to go. So I want to get this list of posts, but I don't want to use the post resource in my components. So I want to create another signal that's read only and use the value that I get from the loader function of the post resource. Luckily, Angular has this built right in with the computed function. So I'm going to define a posts signal, which is going to be the computed of this.postsresource.value. And we'll see that the post value, as I said earlier, has a return type of either post or undefined. And I want this computed function to be only posts. And right now it's both posts and undefined. So I want to use a or statement here and use an empty array of posts as a default if the post resource value is currently returning undefined. This works because the undefined value in JavaScript is falsy, so this will return false, which will then cause this or conditional to proceed to the second half, which will then return this empty array of posts. However, if it is true, then it won't call the second half and it will simply just return this value, which is this array of posts, and that's exactly what we want. Now that we have this post signal defined here, that's all we need. And we want to make sure we don't use this. So we'll define this as private and we can define this as public. And because we're no longer listing the posts directly in the components, we're going to define that as private. I like to label each as public and private just because it ensures that I don't accidentally use something that I'm not intending to within my component. And I like to keep my component logic as simple as possible, and I'd rather do most of it within the services. So we'll go back to my post list component, and we'll see now that it's airing out because I just made that list post private. 
So we still want to keep our post service and inject that. However, we no longer want to use an observable. So we can delete this observable altogether. And then because we're not using an observable, we no longer need to use async pipe. So we can delete that as well and remove the imports. And now we can define our posts to be equal to this.postService.posts. And this is just creating a local property on the post list component class for posts and setting it to the signal of posts from our post service. So now we can see our HTML markup is airing out because we deleted the async pipe and we're no longer importing it to the component. So we can just replace this block of code with the posts. And this is just returning the signal and it's still airing out. And that's because a signal needs to be accessed within a HTML component. So we have to call it. So instead of returning a signal of a post array, it's now just returning the post array that was contained inside it. And that allows us to iterate over it with the for loop. And then we can also track the post ID. And as you can see, the post variable is set to this post. So that gives us access to the fields within the post. So everything is now working as it originally was with the observable method, but we've converted everything to use signals. Now we can go and look at our browser again, just to verify and we'll refresh and we'll see that everything is still being rendered the exact same way, except that we've converted everything to use signals for us. And we no longer have to worry about subscribing, unsubscribing, using the async pipe throughout our code. And we have no observables now in our components. The only observable we have now in our code is this list post function that's returning the observable because the HTTP clients uses observables. But that's fine because we're using Rx resource, which allows observables to be used within the loader function. Now there's one other main feature of the Rx resource I want to go over, and that is the request parameter. We'll just set it to have a change me variable set to this dot change me. And then we'll have a signal called change me defined to be the writable signal of false. So we'll see it's a writable signal with a Boolean. And in here, this dot change me is returning a Boolean value. So if we hover over request to look at the definition, we can see that it is a reactive function that determines the request to be made. And so whenever the request changes, the loader will be triggered to fetch a new value for the resource. So that means whenever this change me signal changes, it's going to trigger this loader to rerun. So we can access that request within here by using this, and then we can turn this into a function that returns list posts. We'll see it's not airing out still, and then we can access the request.change me here and do if statements accordingly. So if you have like a ID being passed for the post, for instance, you can have this set equal to post ID and then do a conditional logic in the loader. But for this case, I'll just console log the request with the requests dot change me just to see that it is changing each time. And then I'm going to add this change me real quick to the post list component and just create a button where we can interact with it. So I'm going to say public change me equals this dot post service dot change me and then go and create a button in here, which will say button and on click, we're going to call change and say that to change me. And then we're going to define a change function change function that we're going to expose publicly to the components. It's going to return void and we're going to use the update method to set it to the opposite of its current value. And this is possible because change me is a writable signal. And so now we'll take a look at our post resource and initially it's false. So this won't run until change me is changed to be true. So now we can go back to our browser and we'll see we have this change me button and we'll open the console just to inspect our logs. And we'll see that initially the loader calls with the request to false. And that occurs at the initial load when the service is first injected and created. And then whenever we click change me now, we'll see that it also re-renders this. So I clicked change me and another console logged with change me set to true. And we saw that the flash of the screen meant that the data was being reloaded. So if I go to my network tab too and delete everything, click change me, we'll see it's making a request again to the placeholder JSON. And that's exactly what we expected. So I can run this several times and I'll keep refreshing the data and keep alternating between the Boolean value of the signal. So that's the gist of what Arcs resource and resource can do. 
I think these new features paired with the existing conventions and dependency injection that Angular already has out of the bat makes this framework pretty underrated. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. I'm trying to make more videos of Go, Angular, and any other topics. And if not, thanks for watching.